Welcome to Star Wars Transmissions, I'm Dan. Star Wars Visions has officially dropped and guys, I absolutely loved it way more than I thought I would. Obviously, spoilers ahead for Star Wars Visions, so get those booty cheeks out of here if you don't want anything spoiled. The series features 9 shorts put together by 7 different animation studios, with each of the shorts being standalone stories that do not adhere to the Star Wars canon. We do see familiar themes and concepts that we know and love about Star Wars, such as the Jedi, the Sith, the Force, the Empire, etc. But these stories are self-contained and shown through an anime lens of the studios that created the stories. I loved everything about this season. The art, the stories, the feel, everything. I love that each episode had its own look, style, and felt uniquely its own while still mixing the familiar galaxy of Star Wars into the story. It's no secret that George Lucas in Star Wars was heavily inspired by the likes of Akira Kurosawa, so seeing Star Wars through an anime lens just felt right and fitting. Even the short, Tatooine Rhapsody, which I thought I wouldn't like, I thoroughly enjoyed. I went into this expecting the duel would be my favorite, but the village bride, the elder, and the ninth Jedi just blew me away. I absolutely loved the art, the story, and music of the episode of the village bride, and especially enjoyed the theme of harmony with nature in it. The ninth Jedi was fantastic. Again, the story, art, and music were superb, and I loved the grumpy old pilot droid that was sipping a drink and didn't want to be bothered while on its break. So good. The lightsabers in that episode were baller as hell. I mean, how cool looking was Kara's lightsaber. That dark muted green lightsaber was so freaking cool. I also love the design of the Margrave Juro, one of the coolest looking Jedi of all time. I love the idea of how Sith and Jedi should look was subverted. For most of the episode we're left wondering if Juro, an unknown character that looks very Sith-like, can be trusted, while a group of supposed Jedi, all of which look very much like Jedi, discuss whether or not they can trust Juro and his plans to restore the Jedi Order. It's not until Kara arrives with her father's lightsabers, where we learn that the waiting Jedi are actually acolytes of the Sith, since the lightsaber blades turn red when they ignite them. And the Elder was so damn dope, seeing the Sith Lord, or whatever he's supposed to be, fight Dan, the Jedi Padawan, and then the Jedi Master Tajin was awesome. Also, I can't front, getting a Jedi Padawan character named Dan in the Elder made me happier than I want to admit. The youngling in me was so pumped and I just kept thinking about how happy I would have been to watch the Elder as a little kid. This was another short I thoroughly enjoyed, and, based on the Master's comments about the Sith being extinct for hundreds of years, I'm guessing this takes place several centuries before The Phantom Menace, maybe even during the High Republic. Either way, it was a wonderful short. The duel, however, takes the cake for having the coolest lightsaber design of all time in it. I mean, an umbrella-esque lightsaber that can twirl and deflect blaster bolts while still being able to be used as a conventional lightsaber is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in any Star Wars story. Even episodes like Lop and Ocho, Akakiri, and T.O.B. 1 were way more fun than I expected. One of the things I enjoyed most about Visions is that it was not handcuffed and burdened by the confines of canon. A conversation that Daniel and I have had multiple times over the last several years is how we wish that Star Wars had the same freedom to tell stories in the same way that Marvel does with the MCU. As we're seeing in the new Marvel series What If, there are an infinite number of timelines and dimensions that MCU storytellers can weave in and out of and it can all work within the overarching story of the MCU. But that's not the case for Star Wars, since there's one timeline that stories have to adhere to. Making things even more complicated is Legends, the Skywalker Saga, and people's thoughts on how those should be handled. And this is another reason why I found myself loving Visions. As I watched these shorts, I didn't worry or think about what kind of implications each short film had on the current canon. I was able to let each story play out and breathe, take me for a ride, and I found myself enjoying the vast majority of it. In only one instance during the twins, when we see Am and Kari duel in space without anything to protect them from the void, did I find myself questioning what was happening in the story but then I checked myself and said, it's cool, this isn't canon, it's a story written within the framework of the Star Wars galaxy that we know and love, but it doesn't have to adhere to the specific rules of the canon and I was able to enjoy it for what the story was. And I have to say, the thought of getting more Star Wars stories that are not considered canon is more exciting to me now than I would have thought before watching this season of Visions. Let's get weird with Star Wars and having a series like Visions that isn't canon would allow Lucas 
Lucasfilm and writers and creators the freedom to tell awesome stories that might not have otherwise been created because they weren't able to adhere to the canon. I'd love for Visions to drop more seasons, and maybe each new season can focus on a different type of animation or storytelling, again without being handcuffed to being canon. This is the beauty of Disney Plus and I'm here for it. I know not everyone will like every episode of Visions, or even the season as a whole, and that's okay, because there's so much Star Wars content dropping every month for the foreseeable future, be it books, comics, shows, or movies, so if Visions ain't your thing, that's totally cool. But for me, Star Wars Visions was super entertaining, extremely fun, and way more exciting than I thought it would be. While I'm not the world's biggest anime fan, I have definitely been an anime fan for some time and have long wanted to see Star Wars stories told through an anime lens, and Visions did not disappoint in the slightest bit. I commend each of the studios that created these episodes and hope this isn't the last we see of Star Wars Visions. But what's your thoughts on Star Wars Visions? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at SW Transmissions. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.